everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. This is so exciting today. We have, we have two of our biggest hall stars here, two of our favorite guests who've been on our podcast multiple times. It's so exciting. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and we have Paul Campbell, Kimberly Susted here. And thank you so much. This is actually the second time that both of you have been on together on the podcast. So it's, it's an exciting day. This is the only way we do this podcast. Uh, neither of us are very strong on our own, but together we kind of balance out as like one individual. That's actually very true. <laughs> so you guys are in the new movie coming up, uh, coming up this weekend on Hallmark Channel. And, uh, but before we get into that, how, how have you been handling this whole, uh, this whole quarantine situation uh, what was it like for you? We talked to Paul in May, so we got a little bit of a halftime update from him uh, then. But uh, <laughs> but uh, what about you, Kimberly? What's the whole situation been like for you? Um, yeah, I think when it, when it all hit, it was jarring for sure. Um, but then you find your silver linings through it um, and things that you would like to keep and things that you would like to see go. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to be living with this for uh, a lot longer than I think I anticipated yeah. beginning um, mm -hmm. and just seeing, wow, it, it kind of feels like, you know, when 9-11 happened, everything just changed. Yeah. It shifted. It shifted the way we travel. It shifted everything and it feels like um some things are probably going to be here to stay yeah um and some for the better i usually after filming a hallmark movie at the end of it because the hours are so long um and it's such a compact schedule i am sick afterwards you know like i get a cold or something but everybody was everything was so extra <laughs> careful <laughs> oh yeah with the disinfecting everything there were crazy amounts of protocols it's virus free across the board nobody's yeah. sick and if anybody yeah. has the slightest cough or sniffle they're they're gone yeah I mean, exactly. they're, they're killed we, yeah we, <laughs> they're killed right away. <laughs> it's for the greater good um no but that's a good point it's, i think sickness in general is kind of not a thing of the past, but it's certainly been kept at bay. Yeah. yeah, so it was interesting trying to meet all of the protocols. We were the first production back, actually, in BC filming. Mm -hmm. um, and every the, the very first week was really stressful, I think, because a lot of producers for projects that were coming up also visited just to like go, what does this look like? Um, how is this going to go? And it was stressful having all of the team leaders, you know, have to manage all of these extra protocols. But by the second week, I think we really settled in mm -hmm. and um, it, we weren't so focused on, you know, everybody wearing mm -hmm. masks and all that kind of stuff. But, they still were, but we weren't, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't distracting in any way. Get used to I, it. I moved through it. It's also interesting moving forward with productions in general, because common colds and flus even, but just the common cold, they're so rampant on film sets. And it seems like everybody's constantly getting sick, COVID aside, mm -hmm. but with the new protocols, if you kept those in place, I mean, it, you know, I've been sick. There's nothing worse than being sick while you're trying mm -hmm. to film a movie and feeling flu -y. but to know that you could go into a production and not necessarily fear having to get a cold or something, because you do, like Kim said, you get really run down. The hours are insane. If they were to hang on to these protocols, even beyond COVID, mm -hmm. like these are one of these positive things. We go, why haven't we been doing this before? Mm -hmm. It's you're yeah. wearing a mask and you're keeping things clean. It just is sort of common sense. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that too with uh, with Sundance, that almost every uh, time I go to Sundance, I get sick uh, either during or after. And you, you kind of just, it's sort of a, almost a joke, like, oh yeah, Sundance, Sundance flu, everyone gets it. And now it's like a whole different perspective on that whole situation. And who knows if they'll have, I pro they probably won't even have it next year, but, but, uh, but you know, that we, we won't have that kind of just sort of laissez-faire attitude 
about uh, oh yeah this is just what happens when you go to, when you go to Sundance anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting uh so yeah did you did you do any uh any uh, quarantine baking or anything like that Are people do yeah, doing yeah i am the worst baker <laughs> that ever lived i think it's because it has rules you know like <clears throat> measure half a cup or three and i can't deal with rules or numbers Mm -hmm. She's like the Swedish chef who's just like, what the, what? she's just throwing <laughs> stuff around. That's exactly how I do it. Even when I cook, I just kind of like, oh, that seems good, or that seems like it. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it does not. So yeah. um, I cannot bake. So yeah. I didn't do you, could, you, could bake. you could follow the instructions. You just don't enjoy it. Yeah, but I, I have a really hard time even reading the instructions. Yeah, I struggle baking as well. So I'm with you. At least the rising kind where you have to wait and wait and wait. And then. Yeah, I don't get the whole baking thing. Why does anybody want to do it? <laughs> it all seems terrible. I mean, I, I have bread, you know, but it, why you go to the grocery store and the only thing that's gone is like Lysol and flour. Yeah. And flour and baking soda. And toilet paper for a while there. Yeah. It was touch and go. It was a nightmare, especially with all that baking you're eating. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I never understood. Like, I still don't. I I don't have a clear explanation as to why the toilet paper hoarding begun. I started it personally. Yeah. <laughs> Did you explain that? I think people got a little scared. They they yeah. were trying to figure out what they were most... like. This is what I need. This is this yeah. is what I need. Yeah, I mean, it is a necessity. <laughs> The, the value, the relative value of toilet paper, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not, not valuable. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was lucky because I'd gotten, uh, I was on an Amazon sub subscribe and save, and you know, s the thing with the, with the toilet paper, and I had gotten it like two weeks before, so I had this big box full, and I was like, wow, I feel very rich. Are you selling it out of the back of your car? <laughs> 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 uh, but uh so yes uh this has been a crazy time and uh so with the wedding every weekend was uh was this something that you guys were planning on doing and then it and then it got delayed or was it just something that just kind of came up during quarantine how did it all happen uh, well the reason that we ended up being the first production out of the gate was because we were supposed to start like March. Mar yeah, end of March. Oh, okay. We were, we were a week away from shooting maybe and then everything shut down. So the whole production, they had done full pre-production on it. It was cast, they had everything ready to go and then they basically just had to put it on the shelf. So when Hallmark mm. was looking for a production that was ready to shoot, they had a crew available and this was the first one that came up just because we were ready to go. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. We thought for sure because it was wedding season that it was just gonna go done. away. Yeah. Because we yeah. missed the window to get it on the air in June, and then they made it work. And yeah. good for them for making it work. Yeah, we hey. It. We did uh, it. <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned a few things, but uh, what was the whole process like for shooting a movie in this? Uh, we've been all been very curious for shooting a movie in this uh, age of COVID. Uh, you guys, you were in Canada, so you didn't have to be quarantined. Uh, like some actors have had to be, but uh, what, I don't know, was that whole experience like as far as the protocols and other things? Want me to take this? Yeah, I do. It yeah. was honestly, it was, it was seamless. I mean, yeah. aside from, they had um, WorkSafe BC, which is the body that regulates all of that safety stuff, worked with the unions and they worked with um, all the production companies. It was sort of, people were left up to their own individual discretion as to how they implemented the policies, but they like, all of the department leaders like hair and makeup and the lighting and the grips and all that, they all sort of had their own set of protocols they had to follow. Mostly what it amounted to was everybody wore masks, mm -hmm. they sanitized everything when possible, and then they tried to observe as much physical distancing as they could with, within reason. Because when you're shooting in a house or you're shooting in a small space, you just cannot be six feet apart. Mm -hmm. otherwise you have light stands falling over, it doesn't work. And then for the actors, we had fairly limited uh, hair and makeup touches, which was actually kind of nice. You know, I was mm -hmm. constantly going, how's my hair look? 
can I do any? She's like, just fix the thing in the back. So we were fixing our own. <laughs> just never mind. Um, just yeah. get <laughs> and she, she, had a, she had a contact with her at all times. She oh, was yeah, always like, right. no, for my thing. <laughs> she was constantly doing my makeup. By the end of the day, yeah. it, it looked horrible. Um, but I'm kidding. But, you know, limited, just limited contact in general. Mm -hmm. And then with the background, the background all wore masks and they were spaced out very strategically. I said, but like Kim said, it was a week of sort of getting used to the new thing, but by week two, everyone had it figured out. And you can't tell when you when you watch the movie that background was strategically spaced and, you know. A lot, a lot of things shifted in the script as well. Where, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, um, indoor scenes became outdoor scenes right. and uh, certain scenes didn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. So there was a lot of shifting within the script and I think there it. was the kissing booth. We had to cut the kissing booth because it was literally just a right. hundred random strangers yeah. lined up to get smooches. It had nothing to do with the movie either, which seems <laughs> odd. Yeah. Hey. I thought <laughs> that scene, but they would not. He just, he just wanted to be the one in the booth that all hundred people had to kiss. Come to yeah. think, it was yeah, actually... kiss, the kissing booth three. Once that sequel comes out, as I'll have like a whole new layer, I think. Yeah. Like kissing a horror, booth three. horror movie. It's called Kissing Booth 3, COVID Bonanza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wondered if they had to change any scenes because you figure you've got these wedding scenes and, and people aren't even, weren't even allowed to have weddings at all. And here you're having all these fake weddings. And so I wondered if like, they had to change some of those scenes. Yeah. No, I mean, for the yeah. weddings, mm -hmm. surprisingly, they were able to keep all of them i don't think they moved them outdoors we did lose some locations last minute because certain municipalities would decide that they didn't want productions shooting there at the last minute mm -hmm. we lost locations but again like they were just being really careful about spacing people and keeping masks on you know also mm -hmm. bc the numbers in bc we have been remarkably low throughout so i feel like the the, yeah. the feeling of the threat has been less which is why we're so fortunate to be here right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of been the same in Utah. Connection to to uh, have an outbreak no. and shut everybody else down. Yeah. So we're extra careful. Yeah, super careful, yeah. 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 Well, it's a good thing because I feel like Chris uh, the Christmas movie season is going like, to like save movie making because, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just the only, everything's getting delayed and delayed and delayed and, and, and Hallmark's like, 40 movies, we're doing it again and Lifetime, 30 movies. Uh, so it's, it's movies. the only, that's what they announced. Uh, Christmas movies? They announced it. I don't know how they're going to do it, but that's what they said. Yeah, and all of these are planning to shoot in Canada, I would imagine. There's only yeah. so many crews. I don't know how they're going to do it, but nevertheless, that's what they that's what they announced. So we'll see. We'll but see. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to be working on stuff. Why yeah, is my hey. phone ringing right, right now? <laughs> and my phone should literally be ringing as we speak. Oh, I think mine so. is. Wow. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, so yeah. What, I thought it might be kind of fun in talking about this movie if you would both share maybe something memorable or just talk a little bit about your your individual weddings and what that was like in comparison maybe you got four weddings in this movie uh did you did you did you guys have a wedding uh <laughs> maybe I not. had two weddings I uh, the first one, um, just because my proposal was so bad, it, it was a real <laughs> horrible proposal. And then we got married really? two days later. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, that's for another time. But it was really a crappy. Oh, no. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, and then we got married two days later in a little gazebo in, in, the, uh, in the Chinese Botanical Gardens here in Vancouver. <laughs> uh, it was very nice. We had a nice officiant. Our, our actual wedding was a year and a half later in Palm Springs. Not our legal wedding, just the party, but we did dress mm -hmm. up. And uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a little hotel in Palm Springs and uh, we had the police come, we had fire trucks <laughs> come. Uh, it, at one point, um, a, a wedding crasher threw a drink in my sister-in-law's face and then a, a gaggle of women chased him off the property. What? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Wow, exciting. That time, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why did you pick Palm Springs just for fun or? or we, Palm Springs. A... we like sort of the 50s, 60s, like movie vibe. We got married at the, um, the movie colony hotel right on the strip there. I don't know. Fun. Um, and we, you could count on it to be hot. Right. It doesn't want to be sweating in a tuxedo. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And didn't you have a thing where you ended up on a, uh, and uh, I've seen on your Instagram, you uh, on a bicycles mm -hmm. on your wedding? Yeah, that, was, that was after the elopement. A little tandy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I just carry on with my story, please? Without, without wow. uh, yeah, we hopped on a little tandy there in, Sta in Stanley Park. <laughs> we, uh, we got married, and then because we were only, we didn't invite anybody to this little uh, garden pagoda wedding. Uh, my mom decided she wanted to show up for some reason and uh, my sister was there and then two of our friends and then they all had to go back to work after the uh -huh. wedding so we were like, well, let's just go to let's go get a bike we'll ride around stanley park take some photos and then we'll go get drunk and uh and what really paid off was after we returned the bike we just started going from bar to bar and we got so much free alcohol because because we had a just married sign and uh -huh. just champagne in our faces yeah do that again just on a Saturday just to see <laughs> get anybody to pony up. Yeah, hey, you never know in this day and age, especially people are like, oh, customers. <laughs> so yeah, exciting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, oh, um, we got married in Denver. And oh yeah. Colorado, and we were so young. I had no idea how to plan a wedding. Ours was. <laughs> Every detail was missed on me. Um, it was kind of just like the fact that it actually happened was a miracle. Yeah. So, um, but it was pretty, I just did what like, you know, people do, which is got married in a church and then had a reception. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, um, when I, is this story over? <laughs> well, you don't need to have wedding crashers and, and ridiculousness. No, uh, yeah, no, your that wedding happened. I mean, we had an open bar. And... <laughs> oh my God. I can't wait to be done all of this stuff with you, Paul. So I never have to deal with you again for two years until we make another movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, carry on, carry on. Some of yeah. Us All right. Well, so this movie basically, you are both guests at multiple weddings together, and you decide to kind of team up, right? To yeah. To get through these weddings. Yeah, wedding buddies. Yeah. <laughs> we... And there's four weddings in the movie, correct? Well, no, I'm not going to give it away. Yeah, there's four. Four. Okay. And it. we have a Jewish wedding. There's a a black couple, mixed race couple, and a lesbian couple. Is that correct? Mm, correct. Okay. And uh, so I don't know. <laughs> what was that like shooting all of these weddings? It was a lot of fun. Weddings are fun, and like Paul was describing his own, anything could happen. So I think the discovery of it was they were kind of the perfect setting for two people to um, not get along and then to get along. Mm -hmm. um, and the arc is, is really lovely. And there's a lot of fun moments throughout each wedding because every single one of them is very different and provides a different flavor and obstacle um, it's such a good device. We're in one of them. Yeah, I'm we're, the, like, yeah, I'm the we're maid in the... of honor. He's, mm. well, I don't even know what you were. You were in it. I was a groomsman. You were a groomsman. Not the groom of honor. And <laughs> yeah, it's... The um, weddings are so, they're inherently romantic anyway. So when you're thrust sort of into these circumstances and there's music playing and people are dancing, it does, it does sort of amp up the relationship building too and and also they're fun like they're fun and they're romantic and everybody looks nice and when you keep seeing the other person at their best you're like oh maybe i am interested in this mm -hmm. person. that's why it's such a fun thing that they go to wedding after wedding after wedding mm -hmm. yeah um the uh, i was a little worried about the the, the cowboy themed wedding 
because um, just wait till you see his wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> it actually we get to see you with a cowboy hat. No, on. no, no, no. Oh no, no. no! That was what I was worried about because I just. <laughs> I look Don't like you have a, like a little, what are those faults? Well, a bolo, I was supposed to wear a bolo tie, but actually there's a line, he says, I hope they don't expect me to show up in a bolo tie. But you are in a vest. I'm in a vest and I've got, and they, and I did request cowboy boots and they were like, no, we're not going to do that. I don't know why. I wanted to go whole hog. Yeah, you know? that would have been amazing. Like uh, I wanted to be like a traditional Denver wedding where you're just yeah. cowboying it up. Yeah. yeah. I think you could pull off a cowboy hat. Why not? Yeah, just like this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so there is more. Uh, the Hallmark has, has committed to embracing diversity. And uh, there is more in this film than we've seen in other films. And uh, how do you feel about that? Is that exciting for you? It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I, you, go ahead, Kim. I know you got. It. I I I. Uh, yeah, I think reading even just the comments of uh, on Hallmark Channel's Instagram page, I visited there just to see how people were reacting to the promo video. Yeah, it, it's certainly new um, for Hallmark to do right, and right. and there is a there is a backlash. Mm -hmm. But I'm really proud of Hallmark for pushing through that and saying, look, this is what we believe in and we're no longer going to cater to the people who, I don't know, for every, the, the loud people I feel like are, I hope are one in 10 in this world. Yeah. They just seem really loud. And for yeah. everyone that they're going to lose, I think they're going to gain an audience of 10 more and those are the people that we want to be engaging with. Those are the people that we want to be making movies for. Mm -hmm. People that are past this, I, I don't even know what to call it. Small-mindedness. Yeah, and, just, you know. just this um, place of comfortability that they live in. Um, that's just for them. And when people break those, those boundaries, it's, you know, it questions their whole existence. And I get it, but at the same time, you know, we need to be telling stories that's everybody's stories and not just a particular story. And so I, I'm thrilled to be part of a movie that is, is doing that um, yeah. in this well, Hallmark family. Well, and it's interesting because you're one of the few people that has played an LGBTQ character in a Hallmark movie right. in, a, in, a, in A Bride for Christmas. And yeah. that's a fan favorite. So it's, it's kind of funny how, how uh, we... I don't know. It's, it's interesting how people react to different things because for me, I, I think it's great. Like tell more stories, tell more people's stories mm -hmm. and there's still be plenty of the traditional uh, movies. And if that's what you want to watch, they're still going to be making those too. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I guess I, I just, what's to me, it's just like, let's just tell, let's celebrate more people. Let's welcome more people into the into the family into the community let's tell more stories i that's how i look at it yeah i've had some interactions on twitter in the last couple of weeks with people that are um not necessarily thrilled by the new direction you know and but and and there have been a few but the the thing that i have found so great is overwhelmingly so many people are so supportive yeah. and so curious to see what Hallmark is doing. And the number of people that have reached out to me and said, hey, if I, the reason that I don't watch Hallmark movies is because I haven't seen myself or my relationship yeah. represented. I can't wait to watch this. There have been so many people yeah. that have said, finally, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to start watching these movies. And that's, that's where we should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. it's, it's, it's been a long time coming and and i'm i'm excited to see what they do and the fact that this is a script from julie sherman wolf i think it makes me even more excited because i love her and i think she's so funny and she manages to bring humor into uh what i think a lot of other people would make just kind of a blah kind of situation she makes it funny yeah. and so i'm really excited to see what and I feel like you two as actors do that as well. Uh, so combined with the script, with you two. 
I don't know. I feel like in this one, we took a lot of Julie's funny situations and just made them blah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like we went the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. No, she's, she, she's written some great funny stuff, and we were really allowed to play with it. This mm-hmm. time. The direction was, go, be funny, have fun. Very different yeah. from Godwin, obviously, which was such right. a mental script. I think this one lets uh, Paul and I shine a little bit in where we're able to be and live and exist, so. It feels mm-hmm. like the characters become more dynamic too, you know, when they're silly and they're, they don't always have to be these like totally together, you know, sexy like leads. They're just like, they're, people are silly and they're flawed and they're, they can look kind of dumb and they can laugh at each other and laugh at themselves. And then mm-hmm. that's what forges relationships to me is, Humor, um, maybe more than anything, is like the, the bonding agent for a lot of relationships. And when you get to play those things, it just, it, it's so much better for character development and for relationship development. You share those, the laughter, and then conversely, you get to share the, the opposite. The sorrow is deeper. Everything mm-hmm. just feels deeper. Yeah. You get to have a more dynamic relationship. Yeah. So did you guys, did it take longer? Did you have a longer shoot because of the COVID? We had one extra day. (laughs) We had one extra day. That that was Hallmark's gift, you know? There you go. It felt like a lifetime, but it it was one extra day. (laughs) Extra day, okay. Uh, Yeah, that was it. We got one extra day and we needed it. I mean, we, we shot right until we lost the light on the very last day we, this is like giant uh, it was a longer script yeah this was a long script and we um i think honestly when we finished shooting the cut was something like 25 or 30 minutes long so when you think in an 84 minute movie and we had to cut <clears throat> 25 minutes so you know you're a hundred and 12, 110, 112 minutes long, and you got to cut it down to 84. Yeah. You're chopping a lot of stuff out. Yeah, that's challenging. Mostly Paul. <laughs> I, I he was like, that just, he was like, I'm like, wow, Paul, that's not the scene, you know? That just like, whatever you're doing, let's just keep rolling, you know? You know what? I'm going to get Paul upset, but wow. <laughs> Yeah. At least both, it's not the, the, the last bridesmaid where the wedding video was like three decades long. <laughs> the wet the wedding videos, three yeah. Years? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, very good. Uh, so you guys are are still writing together, correct? How do they know that? I talk about it all the time. Um, <laughs> When did you talk about that? In May, but they, they asked me, they, I just did a personal, I did a one I'm oh, very popular. You are very popular. <laughs> he is, he is one we, of our I, most popular. We're still writing. We have one, we have a project that is in sort of the mid to final stages of writing that we are literally working on today in our free time. And yeah. uh, it's a Christmas movie that we're still hoping to get made. You know, it's a, it's a pretty crowded marketplace now at Hallmark. Everybody wants to make Hallmark movies. Yeah. We're, we're hoping we can get it made. But yeah, we're writing and then we're always trying to come up with other ideas. We got a million scripts. That's great. Well, that's we exciting. Big things. Do we? <laughs> so I have to ask, Kimberly, even though you broke the news on another podcast, which makes me oh. a little bitter, um, I have to ask you about 10 Lives of Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's happening. Oh my gosh. That is so exciting. Yeah, I, I'm not allowed to say when. Uh huh. I mean, I might, but I no, that's okay. I don't want to get you in trouble. But You're not allowed. Don't say it. I'm like, I don't know if I was or, or not. It doesn't matter. But it, it, yeah, I am allowed to say that it is happening. Oh my gosh, that um, is so exciting. Was this from 2014, 15? I don't know. It's five years ago. Oh. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we are in the final stages of. And we're going to soon be making that but We movie. don't know when. That's right. We had a whole 10 lives, of, 10 lives of Christmas shirt, campaign shirt, and hashtag. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we like to take a... I should have worn it today. I didn't even think about it. Uh, but, yeah, we had a whole whole movement that we tried to start. Well, it worked. Well, yes. It did. What does yeah. your shirt say, by the way? My shirt uh, that I'm wearing right now says, 
Love me like Gilbert loves Anne. Oh. Uh, from Anne Green Gables. You can get these at the Hallmarkies Merch Shop. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but uh, but anyway, we're really excited about that. Uh, they get the whole team back and yep. And uh, cool. I I hope that I think the nerve wracking part is will it be as good as the first? <laughs> yeah. It'll <laughs> be great. Come on. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be fun to put Mary Lee back on and yeah. um, go for it. Yeah. We're really excited about that and how they're going to have to recast the cats, I might assume. I also don't know if they will have to recast the cats. Oh, are those cats still around? Yeah. Oh, good. Perfect. That was something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those cats are important. But they're racist. I know. They're the <laughs> the reason that film is good is not because of me or Brandon. It's the cats. Yeah. I mean, there's so few cat movies. Not even just from Hallmark. Like, just in general. It's like Carol Baskin reference. <laughs> oh, you cool cats and kittens. The reason why that documentary was so popular. Is that <laughs> People love that. Yeah. Well, this has been really fun. I really appreciate you guys coming on talking about the movie. And uh, I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be really, really good. We think and it's going to be We haven't seen it either, but we're... Let us know what you think. We definitely no. will, as always. Well, lie to us if you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have social media or anything like that you want to share? Oh, yes. I'm uh, the Paul Campbell at Twitter, the Paul Campbell. Um, and uh, Paul Campbell official on Instagram. Yeah, and I'm just on Instagram, and it's just my name. So you're on Twitter. What are you talking about? You're tagged uh, sorry, in so I don't, many posts. I don't ever go on Twitter, and I don't know how to use it, so you won't find me there. But I'm gonna teach yeah. you today. Okay. All right. Well, make sure everybody. We'll have all that in the description section. Make sure everybody follows uh, Paul and Kimberly. And thanks again. We really appreciate you coming on the podcast. And we're really looking forward to the new movie and whatever we get at Christmas is going to be really fun. Hopefully, we get to see both this Christmas. And uh, yeah, no, this is for this guy. I have no idea what's happening in my life. <laughs> We'll That's the thing about the, uh, my friends are asking me like, don't, don't they have these movies made like, you know, in advance and don't they, aren't they ready to go? And I'm like, yeah, they make these, they have such a short time window that you throw something like COVID in and I don't know, it's pretty it's interesting. It's from June 22nd to July 14th and it's amazing. Amazing. It's it's amazing. Great. Well, we can't wait to see it. And uh, thanks again for coming on the podcast. And uh, and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And make sure you're all following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and the Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out so much. We also have our patron group and merch stores to so check all of that out. And thank you again so much to Paul and Kimberly. We really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you all later. Sure. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.